that Paul is the baddest ass prep coach that I know. And if you want the science of bodybuilding, if you want to get shredded and huge, this is the guy to do it. Well, it's because I have access to minds like this. <laughs> thank you, Jake. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. But 
If you want to play that game, okay. Can you make up for a low protein at breakfast and lunch with a massive protein dinner? Because muscle protein synthesis doesn't mean anything if you, don't, if you can't actually show it produces a difference in body composition and muscle mass. Uh, we know that water to high carbon meals will increase insulin. Everybody knows insulin is anabolic, right? Uh, super physiological good. Uh, if you have a deficiency of insulin, people with type 1 diabetes have lower muscle mass. And if you have a super physiological dose of insulin, uh, you increase muscle protein synthesis. So people have kind of taken those two data points and just assumed there's a straight line in between. You have to have sufficient protein prevalent already in order for insulin to have any kind of impact. Alright? Insulin alone will not stimulate muscle protein synthesis, but when you combine it with amino acids, combine the carb with amino acids, you seem to get a little bit of a bubble in muscle protein synthesis. Okay? Um, only a small increase of insulin is required to get that beneficial effect. Uh, I say, me personally, my, my personal opinion, this hasn't been looked at yet, but I think four to five meals per day, four to five good doses of high quality protein are going to maximize your response. I think eating too frequently is a downfall for body composition, although that may be in opposition to what we heard earlier today, but my opinion, you can't can eat too frequently, and uh, it can impair the anabolic response if you eat too frequently by producing that refractory response I talked about. And so between meals, with or without carbohydrate, you know your total calorie levels for the day, a lot of people will say, well, just eat more ATP lunch, just eat another meal. I think that the branch chains have kind of a unique effect because of their effect of ATP replenishment just the muscle. And again, we're talking about the caloric bank, your anabolic bank, and your caloric bank. As we age, you get less responsive to amino acids. Um, you need more and more in order to stimulate them. They, they've shown that elderly people need more protein in order to get this response than young people. Um, my personal opinion, I don't think a slow digesting protein source is more beneficial than whey. Um, I think whey is better personally. Uh, Casey has been shown to have a lower muscle protein synthesis anabolic response. As you get lower in calories, you're probably going to need a little bit more protein. I'm kind of speculating here, but um, when you're calorically restricted, again, we talked about how energy plays into muscle protein synthesis. If you're calorically restric restricted, you may need more protein. Obviously, if you train hard enough, long enough, you get branch chain amino acid metabolism, you get metabolism of protein. I wouldn't say it increases the requirement of whole heck of a lot, but maybe 5, 10, 15 grams here and there can make a difference. I tell people when I give speeches, if you're expecting me to tell you what the optimal diet is for you, uh, meal one, meal two, meal three, you're going to be very disappointed with <laughs> that uh, because everybody, the individual variances are so much. But I'm hoping to give you guys concepts that can help you with your stuff and with your athletes and your students. What I'm saying is there is a threshold for minimum to increase initiate muscle protein synthesis. But that's not, it's not just all or nothing. Um, there is kind of a linear response within a certain amount. Um, and then you get to a maximum where you don't get really much anymore after that.
doing tons of aerobic activity, you can start losing your muscle and look like so here's a great study we done by Dr. Wilson. Lane, introduce your friend. This is Dr. Abby Smith Ryan, professor at UNC, right? Chapel Hill? Yeah. Abby did a speech on supplements today. Supplements. Yeah. What'd you think? That was good. It was basically stuff I use too. You know, there's not, you know, there's not a whole lot of sequence amongst you know, people who are here you know, in terms of what's efficacious and you know, what we recommend. I mean, the basic stuff is high protein, creatine, beta alanine, branch chains, all that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, there's exciting stuff coming out with the HIV awesome. We need more data before, and it's not available. Yet. So we need more data before it comes out. But um, you know, typically it's you know it's before, from the time there's that inception of an idea to when it's actually like available to public. Two or three years. You have a good time, Josh. So, <laughs> this is Lane being surrounded. As you can see, the conference is over, like the Sopranos. There's no one here. Oh, there's one guy over here. What's going on? And then there's Lane, trapped. Lane, Lane likes to talk. Yeah, I'm not counting him. Now he's flexing his biceps. <laughs> now his triceps. Now his triceps. Now the forearm. As Ben taught us, those are antagonistic muscles. <laughs> All right, so we're at University of Tampa. Uh, this is Dr. Jake Wilson. You know him? You should. Anyway, we're in his lab right now, so we're going to get a quick preview of some of the equipment we've got in your lab. This is a university campus that's basically designed around optimizing muscle building. Right? Yeah, I would say for sure. Yeah, our laboratory is essentially centered around uh, skeletal muscle hypertrophy first, then strength, then power. Um, and everything that, that stems from that. So you can see here, all yeah, around here, so around. Um, this is where we strength train guys. Um, all, of our, all of our strength training equipment is basically specialized for guys like power lifters and bodybuilders. So we have the glute cam raise, we have the squat racks. This is where guys deadlift a lot of weight, <laughs> okay? Um, <laughs> so um, then over here, is this machine is well? I'll take you over here. A little bit crowded. These are uh, Wingate bikes. So this is where we do interval training sessions. So you know, a lot of bodybuilders will do traditional cardio, where they do 60 minutes, sometimes two hours a day to prep. What we've shown in our lab is that when you do high intensity sprints, um, you can burn or use more fat in 30 seconds than you can in like an hour. Okay, and you get more shredded, you know, it's muscle. So how it works is the athlete will pedal all the way out. Um, when they hit 175 revolutions, weight drops. And it's like you got punched in the stomach. So, um, and, and essentially it's the worst pain that you could possibly imagine. And that's how it works. You know, one of, the, one of the difficult things about bodybuilding is you have to be able to target different muscles, right? Um, it's not just lifting weight, it's about being symmetrical, it's about bringing out certain body parts. So for that, um, we can use what's called electromyography. So essentially what happens is uh, when your brain tells your muscle to contract, it sends a signal to the muscle and you can measure that as an electrical impulse and we can put that on the muscle and measure that. So we can see, oh, you're activating your biceps more. Maybe you're creating more of a mind-muscle connection. Or maybe changing the angle on pull-ups is activating your upper lats more or your center or your rhomboids. So if you want to create back thickness. So we're looking at best ways to do that in the lab.
Now, bottom line for a bodybuilder is what? It's hypertrophy. So this is how we measure hypertrophy over here. You can use that machine. That's looking at the quadriceps. So we use that machine to look at the actual hypertrophy of the quadriceps. Um, but you can look at the biceps or any muscle in general, right? Um, that's our metabolic part. We can measure a guy's metabolism. So if you're dieting um, long periods of time, we can see, well, maybe we can maintain the metabolism, right? Uh, you can also use it for VO2 max, but you can't really do that in this class. <laughs> Um, and this is a dual x-ray geometry or DEXA, and it will scan your whole body and tell you your uh, your muscle mass and your fat mass and where that actually is. Um, so that's a brief tour of the Human Performance Lab, and I just want to make a, a real good observation that Paul is the baddest ass prep coach that I know. And if you want the science of bodybuilding, you want to get shredded and huge, this is the guy to do it. Well, it's because I have access to minds like this. <laughs> thank you, Jake. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me.